Hello, Rachel Cipriano coming to you again from Magnificent Resilience. I wanted to talk to you today about the topic of intensity. You know, some personalities are just more intense and some are more moderate. And, you know, many of you probably know that temperament is something that is a little bit inborn. I have a friend who used to work with babies, she's a nurse, and newborns, and she said that you could feel after a while the temperament of the baby you were dealing with. You know, you could feel the fighters, you could feel the more, the the criers, the more sensitive types, um, et cetera. And there's many different manners that people classify temperament. Uh, you know, there's that model of choleric, melancholy, sanguine, and phlegmatic. There's the uh, DISC model, as I said, many. However, uh, when it comes to how that temperament is going to be expressed, that's where your environment comes into it, your trauma, many different factors. Most of us know that moods are contagious. So for example, I have a friend, shout out to Amy Larson. She has, believe it or not, nine children. And she is kind of one of these very calm and serene personalities. And that works for her. I can see the tremendous effect she has on her children and she brings that kind of mood and atmosphere to her home and that works i will tell you that wouldn't work for me or my experience or temperament anyway getting back to intensity i would say for myself i'm one of the most intense personalities you could ever meet and I think I was born, to use the model of choleric melancholy, so that tends to be an intense temperament uh, from the get-go. However, as I've shared, I lived in a very chaotic, intense environment. And one of the primary reasons for that is that my father had a very intense PTSD from his experience of being a Marine in Vietnam and the subsequent way he was treated. And um, at that time, the boot camps were very intense themselves because basically the drill sergeants and other people in charge were trying to do their best to ensure the safety of and the survivability of the soldiers going over to Vietnam. However, they eventually reformed the Marine Corps because it got a bit over the top, if uh, you're aware of that history. At any rate, uh, that's the environment I was born into. So I already had a temperament similar to my father's and with his level of intensity, obviously it affected every member of our family in different ways, depending upon what their uh, inborn temperament was. And with somebody who already was wired to be that way, it just made me far more uh, intense. And it's interesting when it came to picking my husband, it was his phlegmatic nature, his very calm, serene, even keel nature that was very attractive to me. And I think he would tell you it was my more lively, intense nature that was very attractive to him. So sometimes we just need people and we kind of innately know we need to balance each other out. But uh, the point of bringing up intensity is just for you to kind of have some self-reflection to determine where you kind of fall in that continuum and the challenges that are presented. You know, 
every temperament has its strengths and its weaknesses. So for me, with the intensity, the strengths are I'm very passionate and very enthusiastic and gung-ho and very intense about my relationships and about learning and all that great stuff. The disadvantage of it is sometimes, uh, you know, that more mercurial nature can lend itself, as I've shared, to depression, anger. You know, there's definitely just more mood liability because the emotions are felt so deeply with an intense person. And I saw uh, basically a sign one time that I really wish I would have bought. I've never seen it since. I guess I could have it made on Etsy or whatever. And what it said is, you may be too much for people. Those aren't your people. And that so resonated with me because the truth of the matter is, Intense people can be too much sometimes for more moderate personalities. As much as my son are alike in certain ways, we are very different in that way. He's very much like his father, his grandfather, and his great-grandfather. They're all very phlegmatic. And sometimes I know that that's a little too much for him with me. So, you know, I just have to accept that. Anyway... With the phlegmatic personality, the challenge there, or the great benefit as I've already mentioned, is you can create a atmosphere of such calm and peace, and that's wonderful. Sometimes the enthusiasm, though, uh, can come across lessened and a bit dispassionate. So that can be a disadvantage. Anyway, it's just a very innate inborn trait that can either be dampened or intensified depending upon your environment. For example, you might have been born a little bit more intense in your personality, but if you had one or both parents who was far more intense, sometimes they can crush that personality in a person and kind of uh, break them down a bit. So that's something that can happen as well. All kind of points of self-reflection for you and something to think about, you know, um, as much as probably, obviously, I would have liked to not have been in an environment of, quite frankly, a lot of terror and instability you know, I'm, I know, and I'm learning how to utilize those strengths more and uh, minimize the deficits. And I've had a great year as I've shared. And I would say really this year, there's been a lot more moderation to my emotions. So maybe that's something you want to think about as we end the year and soon lead begin another one. And a lot of times this is time for uh, resolutions and goals. And I think I've shared what I did with my journal that I've kept all year is I put kind of my resolutions and goals at the front cover and I looked at it frequently, um, periodically, you know, maybe once or twice a month at least. And it helped me. I am happy to say I've really achieved a lot of those goals, but there are ones that are going to carry over. So uh, that's exciting and kind of having that visual and looking at it and keeping it top of mind can be very important. So at any rate, I'm looking forward to finishing this year strong and getting off the next year with a bang. And I hope that you are too. I hope that kind of examining that trait and what continuum you fall in it can be helpful to you and figuring out how to maximize the strength of your temperament and minimize some of the weaknesses that I shared. So that was just on my mind today and just a little food for thought. If you would be
be so kind as to kind of comment and share uh, what this means to you, how this operates in your life, what you see in your children and the people around you. This can really give a window, I think, into a lot of your professional and personal relationships and perhaps your selections in the future in those relationships that can enhance and improve and strengthen and discriminate who you kind of mix with the best and who maybe isn't the best combination for you. So at any rate, hope that helps. And if you found this helpful or know somebody who would find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Again, Rachel Cipriano with Magnificent Resilience. Until next time, keep on keeping on and stay calm as much as you can for those intense types.